Solo games can be, frankly, very exhausting and very different. Let's talk about that coming right up. All right, but in all seriousness, solo games are great. And during the pandemic, well, what other choice do we have some of the time? So there's very many different types of solo games. And there seems to be a lot of controversy over what people really like or prefer. And I'm going to go through some options for you. So there's sometimes games like Uwe Rosenberg games. I happen to have Glass Road here as an example. This is called Play the Game and beat your score. That's it. You just play the game like you normally would, except against nobody, and see how big your score can get. And a lot of the times, Uwe specifically will say, here's pretty good scores. If you did this well, if you got this score, you did this well. This score, you did this well. This score, you're garbage. It's very simple. Just a good way to whip out a game and play it and see what you think of it in solo. Now, there are other types of games like, a crowd favorite where you play with the Automa factory and the Automa factory is was originally just working for Stonemaier games types games but now they have their hands in a lot of different places where you play against a deck of cards essentially as your opponent and it takes away a bunch of the stuff they would normally do they try to limit it to what they would normally do and just like put things on the board, put stars on the board differently, put this on the board differently, but they still score points for very different things and can also interact with you and interrupt you and do things against you. So it's more like you're playing against a person. So that's also an option as well. Many games like this. Underwater cities, similar to Terraforming Mars. But in these types of games, you're playing against the clock but you're still playing the game. It will manifest differently. You're doing different things that you wouldn't normally do in the game or you're doing things you would normally do, but in different ways. So it's, you're playing the game, but in a bit of a tweaked version of that game. Still very fun. Lahav. Lahav is another Uwe Rosenberg game that's not exactly like the Glass Road type of way of playing. Now, if you've played Lahav, there's, you know, an amount of spaces you go around the, on the harbor and it limits the amount you can do when you have more players. There's less spots that you hit. Okay, great, but there's less rounds. So in solo player, I believe there's seven, but you have access to each spot along the pier. So you're getting a lot of stuff, but you only have seven rounds to make sure you feed all your people and 35 food in round seven, that's a lot. Now, what type of game is for you? Now, if I'm honest, playing against the Automa, the, ooh, Automa Factory, I'm not a fan. Scythe is actually the only game I own where I will play the solo mode at all. I don't like it in Viticulture. I don't like it in Euphoria. I don't. I never liked it in Gaia Project. There's a lot of games I just don't. I'm not into it. I'm not into it. When I play a game, I don't want the game to be so different just because I'm playing it solo. I want to still feel like I'm playing the game. And in Automa, I don't normally get that. Scythe, I do. Scythe, I would recommend as the number one for Automa Factory related content. That's my preference. In that little part of it. But this is where it's at for me. This is my favorite game to play solo. Because it's just playing Glass Road. No interruptions. I'm not facing against anybody. No one's messing with my stuff. I like games that are multiplayer solo anyway, realistically. But this is just, you want to play Glass Road, but no one's around to play Glass Road. Oh man, I want to play the Glass Road. But I don't want to play a game like Glass Road, but with those components in there. I just want to play how I would normally play it. And for the most part, other than food restrictions and requirements per round and stuff like that, it stays exactly the same. That's my preference. I'm in the minority. Most people, at least if you listen to the internet, love to play against somebody and like they don't want to just beat your best score. That's boring to them. It's not significant. I love this. I just love playing solo. Beat your best score. I love it because I'm still playing that core base. I'm still 
really adhering to what I want to do. And what I want to do is this. I want to play Glass Road. That's all I want to do is just play the game, and here it is. Now, all of those games right there, I love to play solo. They're fun. They get the job done in different ways, but they still let you just play. And that is sometimes more than enough for me. There are other games I love solo as well, but there are some games that just don't hit the mark in solo play that just don't do it for me. And what do you think those games would be? Let's find out. Well, hello. Let's talk about some games that I won't solo or you shouldn't out of the games I have. Just examples, but good examples that you should probably take home with you on that as well. Archipelago, not talked about very often. Should be talked about more. There's a solo expansion to this game that adds a nice little stack of cards like we were talking about before with Scythe, but these are gold cards for you to try to accomplish and see how many points you get based off those cards. I love it. It's the only reason I keep this game, but you probably won't. If you buy this game, it's usually for the negotiation and the back and forth with other players and really trying to accomplish things together in a semi-co-op game. This goes away when you do it in a solo mode, obviously. So probably not something you should look into with that. Hmm. Ooh, this one's heavy. Caverna. This is a beat your score game. Nice and easy. But on the board, no one's blocking your spot. No one's taking spots away from you. So you can always coordinate it exactly to really maximize how you do it. Now, I don't mind that type of style, but the reason I won't play this solo is because it's one of the greatest games in the history of time. I'll share with as many people as possible. I'll play this game with seven players, even though it will take hours. <laughs> I don't recommend that. But solo, this is not what you should be going for. It's not what really you get a game like this for. It's a sandbox game. You want to play it with people. So there's that. Ugh. And then we have a lovely game. Tales of Arabian Nights. Now, if you've played Tales of Arabian Nights before, it's a nice story-driven game with a lot of funny excerpts and a lot of different things happening and sharing stories with the players you're playing with. It's not as much of a game, it's more of an experience. Experiencing it alone, why? Why? There's no, there's no gameplay to back up the solo experience. Uh, it, it's just, there's no why. <laughs> There's no reason to do it. I've played this game where I sat there. I'm like, hmm, you've gone to the Isle of Elephants. All right, I'm on the Isle of Elephants. What do you do? Oh, I want to I wanna send in tigers to take care of all the elephants. So I sent in some tigers. Then I had an island of tigers. And then my next suggestion to get rid of the tigers with rhinoceros was swiftly shut down. Now... That was more funny when I played with people who got to laugh with me about the experience. Other than just reading it. Honestly, read a book. A lot less maintenance when it's a solo shot. No reason. Great game, no reason to solo it. I don't even know why it exists as an option. Don't get it. Not for that reason. So with all that in mind, playing solo is a great experience and designers are finally starting to realize that all their games should be printed with a solo element. In fact, all games like Concordia, for example, are being retconned to have solo versions. Or if you really want to find one, you can go on Google and somebody on Board Game Geek has made a solo version of your favorite game. That's just how it works. Frankly, there are games like Lahav, for example, I like better solo than with people. Sometimes it just works out that way. But solo is not something to be overlooked. Especially in times like these, we have no idea how long it will be until we can get with big board game groups again. So sometimes you just want to play a board game. Why not a video game, Nick? I'm glad you asked. Because sometimes you don't want to play a video game. You don't want to look at the screen. You don't want to engage in that way. You want to engage in a different way. And when thinking about our mental health and our position from that time, sometimes you just your brain can't handle the flashing lights or the detail or all that kind of stuff that's going through in computer-based medium. It's not as good that way. Sometimes you just want to take out a board game 
just play and get the tactile feeling in front of you. Just like sometimes you want to read a book instead of watching a movie. It's the same thing. Solo is not to be overlooked. Give it a try. You'd be surprised how many games you can solo. There's some great solo series out there on the lovely internet. And there's a lot of things you can learn from solo play, including maybe learning how to play the game a little bit better if you're into that sort of thing. So I always suggest solo and there's definitely, definitely a solo game out there for you. You can even play Gloomhaven solo. You'll find it and it's worth finding. So once again, my name is Nick, AKA Until May, and I would really love to hear from you. Leave a comment, subscribe, and we'll be in touch. Thanks so much.